uh, that they have a designated room for the prayer at work. Unfortunately, many people refuse to pray with each other because they claim to belong to different groups. Uh, it's a calamity. It is very unfortunate, and it is happening not only in Nigeria, in many, many places. We definitely can pray behind an imam who knows how to recite the Quran properly and who's following the manhaj of Ahlu Sunnah al Jama'ah, believes in what Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described as the articles of faith. Uh, a person who belongs to any of the deviated sects, and they are known, a sect that claims there was a prophet after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are not Muslims. Uh, a sect that claimed that uh, Ali, peace be, uh, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, was supposed to be the prophet, they are non-Muslims, they are deviated. Uh, Druze, extreme Shias, uh, Alawis, Nusayris, Qadianis, Ahmadis, Baha'is, these are the sects which we do not pray behind them because they are not Muslims. We don't even allow them in our community, in our Islamic centers and so on. Unless if one of them wants to learn about our Islam. A person who is an ordinary Muslim and knows how to recite the Quran more than others, is the one who should lead the prayer. I'm saying even if he's an ordinary Muslim, does not know much of uh, uh, fiqh and detail, aqeedah and so on, but his aqeedah is correct. So if we have minor differences in the branches or following different schools of fiqh, that should not stop us from praying behind each other. Unfortunately, until recently, uh, there were some masajid where they hold for jama'ahs because a jama'ah will be led by a Shafi'i Imam, a Hanafi Imam, a Maliki Imam. Uh, it was practiced until a few decades in, uh, in the Haram. And I visited uh, Damascus and I have seen in the uh, Umawi uh, Mosque the four jama'ahs are being established there. This is not right. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that will answer another question in the Sun Coalition for Imam Muslim, there was a kid age six or seven years old. And he was approved by the Prophet ﷺ to lead the prayer, a congregational prayer, with elders who were much older than him, adults and mature people. Why? Because he grasped on the Qur'an more than any of them. Whenever a delegation would come to them from the Muslims, he would ask about the Qur'an. So he memorized more Qur'an than them. When it was time for them to accept Islam, the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who knows more Qur'an should lead the prayer. He was about seven years old, but he was, uh, we say, mumayyiz. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to pray. So he was appointed to lead the prayer. It doesn't matter how old, how young. Of course, in some madahib, they require al-bulugh, which is not true. Al-bulugh is reached in the age of puberty. So according to the authentic hadith and the correct madhab, it is permissible for uh, a young, uh, a youth, or a teenager, or even a child who did not reach the age of puberty, as long as he is described as mumayyiz, he prays properly, he knows what tahara is. So his prayer, even it is naf, but it is permissible, according to the sound hadith that I quoted, Amr ibn Salama, may Allah be pleased with him, how he led the prayer, and the Prophet ﷺ approved that. So if we have at work a person who is described as min ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, even if he's following a different madhab, fiqh madhab, all of us should lead, uh, pray behind them. Because the first jama'ah is the jama'ah that harvests the greatest reward. And after that, it will consider as a second or third or fourth uh, jama'ah. 